The Howard Stern Show. I would say, to me, the most intimidating writer's room was the when I joined The Simpsons. They, they, they were such... Each one of them, uh, you know, George Meyer, I mean, the list goes on and on and on, and Jeff Martin and um, John Vitti, and uh, each one of these writers in that room was a, a first-class comedy mind, and I went into that room, and I was scared shitless. When you joined The Simpsons, uh, comparing that with all the other writing rooms, and you say that's the most difficult, yeah. is that pitch room like we, you, you walk in, and you don't hand them a script? You no. just give them an idea for a script, and then you go off and write it? Here's the intimidating thing about The Simpsons, is that I showed up, I had never written that format before, I'd only done sketch. I get this job on The Simpsons, and they still are pretty much working with the original writers. And then... What happens is they say, all right, Conan, new guy. In three weeks, James L. Brooks is coming. Aye. James L. Brooks, who is... The if creator. There's a, if there's a Mount Rushmore of comedy writer, creator, brilliant, absolutely top-of-the-line, uh, intimidating people, it's James L. Brooks. I'd never met him before. They say, he's going to be here in three weeks. You're going to go into a hotel room that we're renting, and one by one, we're going to pitch him comedy ideas for The Simpsons. And I spent three weeks holed up in my apartment Oy. thinking and just hating myself and being miserable and thinking and thinking and thinking and then I, I got myself to such a state of misery that I went in they I went up to Jim Brooks and I pitched three stories and they took them all and afterwards wow. people were like wow that never happens and Jim Brooks has this very distinctive laugh you can hear it if you watch the old taxis or the Mary Tyler Moore's you can hear his laugh and he was laughing. And I was one of, I mean, I so, that meant but so much to me. But look at the nightmare you had to go through. You know, people look at a career and they go, oh, it's so easy. He's lucky. He's this and that. You have to almost put yourself in a room ready to fucking kill yourself to get through this thing. Because you've got yeah. to take it that seriously or I, else I mean, you'll never be a success. SNL it wasn't the writing room that intimidated me as much because they were brilliant writers. But I was a good... I'm good in a writing room. I'm a good if it's the, if my analogy is always if it's the Dick Van Dyke show, I'm Maury Amsterdam. I, I'm the guy that gets up on the table. I was the clown for the writers, and I could make them laugh and do shtick. Were you frustrated the Saturday Night Live years that you didn't get to really perform? I wasn't. I wasn't. I was really interested in performing, but I looked around at what those guys were doing, right? And I was very aware they're doing what I don't do. And meaning, I did. I never looked at Phil Hartman and said I could do that better. Because I couldn't. I couldn't come close to being as good as Phil Hartman. I never looked at Dana Carvey and said, I mean, those guys were so brilliant at doing that. I always knew that if I'm going to make it, I remember I used to actually look at Dave in the 80s and say, God, that guy's, I'm nowhere near as good as him. But I could do some version of that. I could be myself. And the way that you have made a career of channeling yourself and being yourself you're not a guy that does impressions. You're not a guy no. that... But I knew deep down if I could find a venue where I could be myself but then channel all this weirdness and get to kind of head write it but also preside over a lot of madness, I think I could do it. Yeah, because when, um, when you were uh, at some point in your career, when, you know, again, you were looking for shit to do, right. you used to do a little phony talk show in your own apartment, right? Yes, and, yeah. and, and kind of pretend to be a talk show. Is that where you would do the impressions of the legendary George Takei yes, of Star Trek? Yes. You loved, I, according to people who knew you back then, that you loved doing that impression. I loved, uh, I don't do impressions, but right. for some reason, George Takei just fascinated so me much from fun. Star Trek. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, he just had... <laughs> This, uh, and I remembered we had written something for him, and I had uh, met him at some point. And uh, he, I, I, I remembered he told me that he got to be in a production of Aladdin, and basically <laughs> he said, and I got to be the genie, but it was yeah. the way he said it. He said, I'll tell you, Conan, I got to be in a production of Aladdin, and voila, I'm the genie. <laughs> and uh, that stuck in my head. So uh, Jeff Garland, who I roomed right. with in Chicago, uh, used to wake me up at 3 in the morning. I'd be sound asleep. He'd kick open my door and he'd say, uh, do your fake talk show and be George Takei. And right. I'd be like, oh, God, all right. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, I'm the genie. And he would laugh for 20 minutes. <laughs> we have George on all the time. He's our announcer. He's and, fantastic. Oh, my, he's fantastic. He goes, uh, tsunami, tsunami. It's not tsunami. It's yeah. tsunami. It's tsunami. Yeah, wait, play, play Conan the list, because you only would appreciate yes. this. Go ahead. Tsunami. Go ahead. See if I can find the Find guacamole. It's not guacamole. Or Guatemala. Yeah, right. It's guacamole. Well, here's one that's good. Musculature. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
he's, he's just wrong yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, right. It is, it is musculature, <laughs> George. Uh, awa. 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 Uh, here's, here's, the, here's, the, here's the resistance. Oh. Guacamole. Guacamole. You know, Guacamole. Here's, a, here's a fun fact. I One of my, my favorite episodes that I wrote for The Simpsons was called The Monorail Episode, and I wrote a cameo in it for George Takei, and he turned it down. <laughs> and You're all of kidding. us were like, what? He turns nothing down. And this is The Simpsons. Right. right. And this is like year four of The Simpsons. Right. And he turned it down. Why? And I couldn't believe it. I, because, this is what the word that got back to us, he is apparently on the Board of Transportation in San Francisco. Right. And uh, I feel this script mocks the monorail, which is a valid <laughs> form of transportation. And you were like, what? Ah! So he turned down. The- so I was t- hugely depressed, went into a right. funk, right. and then Al Jean... Took a Hail Mary pass and called Leonard Nimoy, who's better. He outranks Sulu. Right. And uh, Leonard Nimoy said, I'd love to do it. Of so, course. so Leonard Nimoy.